Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we go. All right. Get this down to the right size here. Get this down to the right size. Bear with me while I get all this stuff done here. Takes a moment to set up the screen. All right, we should be sharing the screen. I'm gonna refresh this page one last time. Uh, and, uh, you know, just apologize to folks who, who didn't get their stuff in on time. We, uh, we just gotta keep rolling here, folks. Got a lot of shots to look at. Before we get going, does anyone have to go uh, soon because of, of another commitment. You got something else you got to do you, and you see your pictures down at the bottom, you don't want to wait, anyone? Okay, here we go. Are we recording? We are. Uh, welcome everybody, Don Gennetti here, project52prosystem.com and lightingessentials.com, lighting-essentials.com. And, uh, if this is your first time here, we're doing some reviews of some of the photographs done for the, the free tabletop assignment. And uh, uh, it's uh, been a lot of fun. We, uh, we have number, uh, what is number six to go up here in just a moment. Uh, right when I, it's being uh, processed right now. So as soon as the video is done processing, the new assignment will go up. And uh, let's get going. I try to do uh, uh, the kinds of... Uh, reviews that I like, which are uh, not invasive or angry reviews or ugly reviews, but uh, real world reviews. Okay, we've got a shot by Mike Carpenter here. Michael, are you out there, Mike? Hi, Don. How you doing? Hi, Mike. Um, this is nice. I, I think it's a little underexposed. Don't you? You know, when I brought the levels up, I started getting a lot of the, the really bright highlights on that foam. Uh, started yeah. really jumping out there. Yeah, that was why I knocked it down a bit. Um, try knocking down the contrast, but bringing this back up, because these are white foam, right? Yes. Yeah, and there's nothing on here that's white. Uh, we're way down in a grayscale here. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's, and when you're shooting the foam, remember, this is plastic, right? So on the edges right here, if you're side lighting it, which I think you are, yep, you are. When you're side lighting those edges, those, every little membrane of plastic gets a highlight on it. So it's not really too bright. It's that the, the plastic itself is reflecting the softbox, so it's going to be pure white. How do you get rid of that? You can, uh, right off camera here, uh, put a, you know, find a, the sweet spot. You'll have to move it around while you're looking through your camera. Mm -hmm. uh, put a black card over here. Maybe it's... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's two inches wide, three inches wide, black card, just to give that little guy something to block the light from hitting it. The same thing with this one. This one seems fine. This one wasn't a problem, right? Right. It was this one and this one. So you could put little black cards, not to give this anything to reflect. In this particular case, we're using them to block the light so that the plastic, the little shredded plastic that comes out when you look really close to the edge, doesn't reflect the, the light source back in. All right, but for as for dimension, yeah, really cool. We got a shadow down the back side. We got a highlight over here. Got a highlight and shadow. We see this as a, a square. We see the roundness here in two ways. We see it here in this natural uh, light drop off to uh, shadow transition, but we also see it in the reflection uh, or the, the shadow there is of this cone. Somebody has a commercial running about ticks. If that's you, please mute yourself. We don't care about no ticks. All right. Well, hundreds of St. Louis County residents answered the call reporting businesses were failing to comply with stay-at-home orders. I think it's uh, the person listed as alien there. I think it's theirs. Oh, they're 
I tried that. It's not them. We must stay in our homes. It was, huh? Hold on. Hold on. Patricia and more than 900 other people sent their complaints through the county's website or by email. You can almost hear the desperation in some of these emails. Employees pleading for anonymity. After all, in some cases, they were reporting their own. It was actually coming from my computer, from a web page that's not open. Oh my. That's. Uh, Weird. So I killed the uh, I killed the browser window. I got it. What do you do anyway? Uh, good shot, Michael. Yeah, Thanks. It's just you gotta you, you gotta be very careful when you're shooting this this foam stuff. Yeah, those those real specular highlights on it are the ones that were really get me as I brought as I had those levels coming up because they they really stood out. Um, so yeah, when I dropped those, it's, when I pushed it to Facebook, obviously the levels came down a little bit, but yeah. yeah, I mean, everything you're saying is absolutely right with the original file. Yep. Uh, yeah. Right. Hey, um, there's one thing I want to mention too, before you move on to the next one, I just wanted to say congratulations on the next grandchild. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. My, uh, my daughter, uh, can't have it fast enough. <laughs> she's sure. <laughs> she's really tired. She's done. She wants the baby out and into the world we we're hoping for wednesday yeah um, wishing everybody well yeah thank you michael all right next one up is eileen thomas hey there Don. i'm here eileen how are you very good how are you doing all good. right so we've got some nice highlights and shadows and roundness in here uh eileen what are you did you make it orange on purpose I did, yeah. I like the warm glow. Okay, so what did you use for lighting? It was a oh, right uh, yeah, my desk lamp. <laughs> All right. And of course, the soft box from the upper top. Is this soft box going off? Yep. Okay, I can see. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right. Um, that's cool shot of your. Of your Bronica system, is that yeah. a is that a G one? Sorry, is is this a Bronica G one or is this a six four five? Um, it's a ETRSI. Okay. All right, so it's a six four five. Six four five, cool. right? Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I, bought it, I bought it used a couple of years ago. Ah, uh, do you use it often? I've used it maybe ten times. Ah, you should use it all the time. I know, such a pain about the developed film. Yeah, I'll send it out to Fine Lab. Yeah, you could. Their prices are, are ridiculously good, and their scans are ridiculously good for the piddling amount of money they charge for them. So, I know, I know. Yeah, I, got, I paid back $300 for that Bronica and two lenses, but I bought two additional ones. Yeah, really great. Nice shot. Thank they you. They look gold with your warm light. Yeah, I love the warm light on the black for some reason. Yeah, looks like gold, looks like like bronze art. Makes it, work, makes it look like you should pay more for it, you know? Well, you know, if it was just regular light, it would be a, uh, it'd be a less interesting photograph of old cameras. That's true. So you've, you've added a little uh, production value to it. Very good. Thank now, what you. did you shoot it with? Oh, my Nikon Z7 and the 24 to 70. Okay. Yep. Pretty much my go to system right now. I think it's at 50 millimeters or so. Very cool. Like it. Thank you. Like it. Frank Greaser. You got a fish. Hello, Don. Hi, Frank. A fish vase. 
Well, that's a pitcher. They, they call it a gurgle pitcher. So when you okay. fill it up with water and you pour it, it makes a glugging sound. And I've been looking at this in the kitchen for a long time and wanted to try to take a photo of it. So I, I took this opportunity to give it a shot. Well, we see the shape of it. We've got our highlights and sh shadows. We've got this one in here. Uh, we see the texture of it beautifully. We've got very bright highlights, very sharp fall-offs through here. So we know it's a very shiny picture. Um, it's challenging to, to work with it. I imagine, are these darker lines in here to like fish lines or what's going on with those? No, it's smooth. That's actually a reflection of the room and me taking ah, the photo. Yeah. Yep, got to control those. After I took it, I thought about it a while and I, I knew I needed to find a way to block those off. Uh, sometimes you got to take, you got to take some uh, big four by eight foam cores mm -hmm. and you make uh, V flats out of them, put them behind you so that you are blocking off the room, especially if there's things in the room that can reflect and that can be uh, right. a household here. Uh, yeah, because I'm, uh, I'm looking at it and I was thinking those were, you know, baked into the enamel here, some long well, stripes, but definitely smooth. But those are reflections that I have to deal with. Yep, and uh, you can imagine a you can imagine a client getting this picture back and going, "But I don't have lines in my picture." So right. So I learned a lot from uh, working with this. Good. Good. Any anybody who has a shiny picture with a lot of shapes you will learn a lot spend two hours two or three hours trying to shoot it you'll learn a tremendous amount trying to shoot it oh uh, okay all right you've got uh dark field lighting or uh, uh bright field lighting here no it's not yeah it's bright field uh, i mean dark field lighting so you got your little thing behind the picture and you got your black cards here so what those stripes are something out here and where's your your camera's here right yeah so a couple of cards right here would you know not to block the light but to give that picture a smoother reflection good job thank you julie classical right. old still life here yes <laughs> side lighting yes no, knowing julie i've got to ask is this your famous window or is this strobe uh it is window light there's a behind the scenes there we go yeah just like rembrandt would have painted it right there <laughs> real pretty thank you so the um light coming in here we've got the the, the rose the uh, orange is looking good here um this could be a little brighter julie but yeah do you think what i just needed a little more i think i have a fill there but maybe a little bit more yeah well you got to fill there because you got to fill on the yeah there's a fill on that thing so there's your yeah there's yeah your i do yeah maybe a white card at an angle back there you know okay at an angle right about like that angle a little bit farther back right out of camera would give you a an edge along there. there yeah yeah i needed that it was a little dark i thought yeah, yeah. um and, and what happens is with it it did get a little dark but it also got boring compared to this right and the, and the orange is very cool and the grapes are very cool and the glass with the red wine should be very cool but it's just kind of blah yeah I like your composition. I like the space up here that you left. Let the flowers reaching up. And you're also shooting from a, I don't think it's a, you're not shooting from below, but you're shooting from pretty much straight across, right? Right. Yeah. Because now we're looking up at the flowers here. What lens? Oh, it's, yeah, I have the info there. 45 millimeters? Yeah, it, it's a zoom, but at 45, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Really nice. Love your behind the scenes. It helps so yeah. much. Daniel Franks. Thank hey you. Don. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. 
Um, you know, there's so much to like about this shot. I love the that the fact that this is dark here um, and here, and then we get this brighter area on the wood. It's very cool. Uh, I love that little light catching the, the one inside. The heavy side light on the on the flowers gives us these edges all the way through here and in here. Um, and I really like the blue. We've got all these warm tones almost everywhere. Even the greens are warm down here. Uh, and then we have this blue. It just really, really pops. Is there a behind the scenes? Yes, next, uh, next image. All right, okay, you've got your grid way down low too. Yeah, I was thinking maybe candlelight or firelight or something like that. Uh-huh, is this a flag or a cookie? Uh, that's a flag. Okay, is there, what's causing the, um... oh, I see, it's just a simple light. I, I was thinking that was something else, that's this. Yeah, that's the so shadow. You, yeah, so you're getting that, uh, that light is just coming right along the, scraping along the background there yeah and is there a light inside the you know i shot it initially that way but then i turned it off because the blue gel wasn't really showing up with the light on so i just turned the lamp off okay what's where's the blue gel is that in this yeah that's it's in got there. it okay got it okay so this these these surfaces aren't glossy there's a little tooth to them yes yes yeah, really it's like nice. a fabric. Thank you. Yeah, it's really nice. You know, when you when you you move back and you squint, you get the the blue and the green here, and then you get these um, things down here. So you have this nice composition going on there. Very traditional Thanks. composition, real clean. Uh, I like it. Lens. Thank. Okay. Uh, that was the. Uh, one hundred and five. The one hundred and five. Yeah. All right, F10. Okay, the two image focus stack. Cool. Really well done, man. Thank you. Alex. Hi, Don. Hello. You've got a top, me? you've got a top light, right? Yeah, I used your, yeah, it's actually a composite of two different photos. Uh-huh. So it's <coughs> the light top kind of facing back like you uh -huh. had in the in the diagrams oh, on the is it facing back or page? facing forward to forward towards you oh gosh i can't remember forward maybe yeah a little bit yeah, forward, forward. Yeah, yeah forward exactly like you showed it in the picture yeah yeah, yeah. You and then you can see mm -hmm. because if you tilt it back you're not going to get any light behind yeah. your subject and you're going to light That's your right. background up which is yeah impressive. yeah no it was exactly like you said and then the behind the scenes was just i actually shot the three bottles um kind of pulled the the things away from them a little bit to get the light through it and then i did use blend modes in photoshop oh very nice because i had an issue actually i was going to ask it i thought probably i should have used black cards when I shot it with the light behind, should I have used black cards to create that black edge? Because the, the edges were coming out really blown out. The edges were coming out blown out. The edges of the bottles? Uh-huh. Oh, and then you used the black cards? No, I should have. I didn't. <laughs> well, what, what's black on the edges of your bottles here? I had to blend the two pictures, so I shot oh, I it see. Yes. first. Yeah, a black cards would be would be certainly okay. Um, okay. If the white was coming out too much, then cut it, then then uh, change the angle. So you change the intensity of that angle uh, or the light, uh, maybe. But uh, I think uh, I think this is fine. I think you've got a nice look to this. Okay. In here. Um, now, some some art director might want it to be bright. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, this this works very well. Okay. And, and what is that? Is that beer? Yep, it's beer. It's a local uh, microbrew. Ah, that's probably why it says craft beer on it. 
Yeah. Had I, had I got that far <laughs> down the label, I wouldn't have asked that stupid question. Um, very nice. Good. Thanks. Good color too, Alex. All the warmth Thanks. everywhere. Yeah. Labels, I just went around good. the house and found all the junk that the previous landlords had left in our house. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, you know, <laughs> labels look great. Good. Thanks. I know who this one is. Is that the only one you put in? Oh, yeah. you, put, you put the far one in. Okay. Well, that one, yeah, I shot that a couple days ago, so it was, that was what got put in. This is really nice, Greg. Tell them what you use for a lens on this. So this is shot with a 70 to 200, and I'm shooting it at 200 millimeters. I was looking for a little more depth of field, but I focus stack this shot even. Um, so I like the low angle and I, you know, I was just trying to uh, come up with something. I wanted to shoot it closer and I did go back and shoot it closer with a 60 millimeter, but my focus stacking wasn't working really well. I had some artifacts in there. So that's why I ended up submitting this one. But since then, I have gone back and fixed my focus stacking on my 60 millimeter shot, which is much closer. About, I want to say it's about like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a really clever shot. And when you look at it in, with the crop, or even this, when you look at it, um, you know, it's, it's, we're looking at something not the way we normally see it. It's kind of fun. Uh, we get inside it, uh, the close-up shot really does have an, uh, almost the appearance of you're there, you're right in them because this one is is uh, uh, on its side and coming right up next to you, the viewer. Uh, it's very clever. It's really well done. Did you, you got a line. Thank you. I think you get a little sense of shape there. Yeah. And there, the oh, next yeah. One is you got great sense of shape and depth too because the depth is, is brought on. We got light on that one. We got shadow on the one behind it. And we've got light on this rim here. Uh, we've got light to dark, light to dark to light. There's this, and this, this one being a little bit brighter in front of the darker one back there. Just that's depth. You know, we've got everything we're looking for. This is a really, really clean shot. So I have one scrim on the background uh, light, but the, but the otherwise it's just, it's a one broader soft box to the right, lighting the whole scene. What's doing the fill on the left? Just a card. Okay. A little bit of a card. Actually, I've got two cards set up on the left and it's just out of frame off to the left, but it's a white card and a black card. So the black card helps give the darker uh, back cup on the left side and the white card helps the front cup. And this um, little uh, scrim here is to keep uh, some of the shine off this? Yes, exactly. Let's go back. This is um, aluminum foil. Right. A, a, yeah. Uh, so, and it's painted aluminum, but it's interesting how quick it gets kind of, it's, it's bright and it irritates the eye when you start looking at trying to read the product. Yeah. Like across, across that medium roast, uh, the orange color, you know, it gets hard to read the type when light is shining on it. So. Yeah, because every little little crinkle of that aluminum foil is giving us back a pretty sharp, uh, definite specular. Very clean. Good, good. I love this. This is how you do it. I now, also you know, have. You, you know, Greg, that's old school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in front it's of the. Okay. It's what's in front what we of, do. In front of the soft box, I also have a strip of uh, translucent tracing paper that is at an angle. So I'm trying to get a little bit of a gradation on the front of that uh, Pete's uh, coffee label. Mm -hmm. I like this in here, little flags. Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. Uh, you know, old school is, uh, it's a great teacher. Uh, uh, you don't know, I don't think that people know how to know why or how to do it new way, the new ways, if they haven't done it the old ways. 
so that you know what you're doing, you know what you're trying to achieve. So very nice, really nice. Thank you. Arnold. Hi, Don. Hi, um, Arnold. Yeah, I shot a lot for this assignment. You can see if you scroll down until I arrive at this. So. All right, so we've got a uh, little hard shadows going here, hard shadow from the tennis racket across the stuff here. We've got, uh, looks like it's a, uh, looks like it's a one light shot, am I right? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. That's kind it's of just fun. like a beer bomb. Um, I tried a lot of things, but I could not get the, because what I wanted actually is specular lighting. I did not want diffuse lighting because it kills the presence of the setup. So I wound up just using beer bulb with it. Yeah. Now bear bulb will give you these wonderfully sharp shadows. Very clean, really clean. There's a, a lot going on here, Arnold. There's a lot going on. Um, we get the shape of the balls by the highlights and shadows, highlights and shadows. We get the shape of that. We get the shape of the, um, even though you're, you're coming down on it, so you're foreshortening these little chest pieces, we can see their shape in the shadow. Very nice. You must have been in my brain for next week's assignment. You'll see. Uh, do you think I succeeded in the assignment? I mean, in the dimensions and forms? Because I I don't know. I mean, it's, I did not have a gradient on the background. I did not have any gradation on the background on that one. Well, you didn't light it that way. You didn't light it for gradation. So, I mean, you can't, you, this subject doesn't call for it. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's, looks, looks, it's very nice, very nicely done. It's a nice shot. Don Fidel. Ooh, nice subtle Hi there. light on the background there, Don. That's nice. We've got this lovely dark side here of this clock going against the lit side of the background. Same with this dark side against the light side of the background. And then all of our highlights over here against the darkly lit background. But we still have enough background light over here that our shadow reads against it. Lots of dimension there. The shadow from the box in front going back along there. That's really fun too. So what are these, Don? Oh, those are clocks my dad made. Are they are they large or small or what? No, they're probably twelve inches high. Okay, so like a desk clock. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, got a little glare on the glass. I don't know if there's any way you can shoot a desk clock desk lamp like this without getting glare on the glass. Look at your behind the scenes here. Yeah, okay, good. Now, if you were shooting these for the manufacturers, they'd probably send them to you without glass or removable glass, so you could take it out. Yeah, actually I could have removed it, but <clears throat> the, um, you know, my dad makes beautiful clocks, but he insists on using the crappiest uh, mechanisms. And those, the faces are actually paper. And so, oh. Yeah, I, I I didn't want to tear them up, so I just left it on. Okay. Hey, Don, what about a polarizing filter? If it's at the if it's at the right angle, polarizing filters only work at ninety degree angles. Um, so you know, it, it if if it was at the right angle, I happen to think it might be. Cause that's kind of. 90 degree, 90 degree there, 90 degree here. Um, that could work as well. Do you have a polarizing filter, Don? For my camera, yeah, for the lenses, yes. <clears throat> I thought you also had to put one on the light. Um, you, you, no, you can, it's not, it's not one or the other. Um, it's that you can polarize the light and the camera. 
Ooh. if you wish, depending on how you're using the light. On this yeah. one, I would try the polarizer, but I don't know. I really yeah. don't. Um, well, the, the only other thing I was thinking about is I, I sort of wanted you to know that there was glass there. So, yeah, uh, and the way you the way I would do <coughs> the glass is I would have taken this. Uh, here, let me do another share here. I would have taken the glass off of that. So I got the, the glass like this, right? right? But so I've got a circle. The um, inside the clock is everything looks great. It's all nice and contrasty, right? Then I would create a little like thing like that and then paint this in white at about 10%. And what it would feel like we've got a, a you know a little slightly curved glass over the clock. Okay. All right. I'll try that. Yeah, very cool. What lens, sir? Oh, Sigma 105 macro. Nice, nice shot. Nice nice behind the scenes. That's working really well. Thank you. Um, Chris, Chris here. Uh, Chris, I don't know what this is. It's um, all distorted pretty badly here. Um, post it up on Facebook. Tell us what you're trying to do there. A lot of distortion in that picture. Kim. I am here. Yeah, uh, real nice through here, real nice through uh, all up in here. I like your light on the back. You put a light on the background, which let the handle pop through in here. So we've got dimension here, a lot of dimension. Um, the flowers look good up front here. The only place that I have a problem with your, your picture is your edge here. See how the edge just disappears into the black? Yes. That's where we need a white card. Now I'm going to draw it in camera, but you don't want to put it in camera, okay? Uh, okay. But it's going to be back there, back behind your your set. So as this teapot here, the the camera hits the teapot, the angle is to back here off that edge, and it picks up the white card. You see okay. that? Yeah. And that'll happen all along here. Then we'll have that teapot. Um, Lit, lit so well against the background, like here, really yep. nice. The scrolling here against the background, really nice. Um, there's your lighting there. Let's go look at that. 50 millimeter. Let's see, I'm gonna make a new tab. Okay, so you built a, you built a, like a light box back here. Right. What's inside there, Kim? Um, a soft box. Okay, soft box in here, and then you've got these two big flags on the side. That's what you're yeah. doing. Okay. And then there was the um, flash in the back, behind. Yeah. Yeah. And then the I mirror. See, yeah, I can see that. I see the mirror. Um, I think you just needed one more light, Kim. So it would be up above, like where? It'd be back here. Okay. I makes sense. Yep. Yep. However, um, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you to put it back there. I didn't know you had a flag here. So this flag is going to keep any light from hitting that. Okay. So you have to take another speed light, put it here, and bounce it against that light to what light that card up. Okay. Um, and then play with it until it's it's right you know you don't need a lot of light on the white card because you don't need a lot of light on this teapot we don't want to like create this flare of light from the back just need a little bit of an edge okay all right okay, thank you yes absolutely people on my front porch chatting 
and I don't know who they are. It really confuses me. All right, Ilona. Hi, Don. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. I like your backlight on here. Coming through here, lighting this up. That's nice. That, you can see the bottom of this, doesn't separate from here well enough. Going to have to work on that. Uh, I would say in Lightroom, the bottom of this brush, I'd bring it up a little bit, brighten okay. it a little bit so that it comes off the darkness of the, um, whatever that thing is sitting on there. Yes, the platter. Um, yes. Okay, platter or something. Uh, that looks great. That looks really good as well. Plus you have light in the background here. That gives us a little bit of dimension. Mm -hmm. We don't have great light on the label. Right. I'd like to get some really great light on the label there. This is great up front. This is great up front. Um, the composition is nice. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. So you've got light coming here and light coming here, and then it gets dark here. Uh, right. And Alona, you made it dark behind the cap. Maybe we put a, uh, bring it out a little bit so that the light hits it back there. Then we've got light against the black cap. Hmm. Then, it, then it reads dimension because right now the cap just sort of melts into the background there. That's not what we want. We want it to stick out like that one and that one does. I'll let, look how bright the, the, um, uh, the brush is, yeah. and then it gets dark behind it because of the shadow. That's mm -hmm. what gives us dimension and shape. Right. right. Um, I, I had a, a trouble with lighting because the razor was too shiny, then there wasn't light on everything else, then the light was changing because there was cloudy, sunny, so it, and uh, these are seven photos altogether, so it was really crazy to make sure that I catch it when there's the same light and <laughs> for like a minute or two. Yeah, and you got, you've already set us up for these edge lights right there. Our brain picks that up immediately is that little backlight over here, but the backlight's not getting to the jar of stuff. Right. Uh, it's not getting here to here. So you're gonna have to like lighten that up a little bit back mm. there, which you can do because this is silver. You've already set it up to be light, right? So that's fine. Um, so you think I can do everything in Photoshop, finish it up? Uh, no. You can make it better in Photoshop. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can make it better in Photoshop. I don't, I don't know if Photoshop's going to give you a portfolio shot, um, okay. but you're going to have, you know, cause this, this, this is very dark in here. Really going to have mm. to bring that up. Well, if you have, um, uh, Oh gosh. You have uh, some way to bring, like Vivesa would bring this up, this orange. Hmm. Okay. Or That's yellow good. here. That might work. Vivesa can work as a, um, as a nice sort of almost fill tool. Okay. So what should have I done differently to get a light behind? Because um, I have the fabric behind it like extend it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have the next shot should be behind the scenes. I think one thing I should have done, I had another texture that I was shooting with before. Maybe I should have got that away and use white card there. Uh, but I'm trying to have fillers everywhere possible. Well, it depends on whether they're doing the job or not. Um, this shot from camera, you've got light behind the jar. Mm -hmm. Here, there is no light behind the jar. Right. Yeah. Um, some ways you can put light behind the jar, just turn it so it gets the light, you know, the, the fabric. Right. Yeah. Uh, shot at 35 millimeter on a zoom. Yes. Very good. Very good. Ling. Ling, are you here? Okay. Um, you've got uh, some good light. I can't tell 
what you're doing here. But we've got some little bitty highlights. Oh, there's a nice big highlight. Never mind. Never mind. That's probably not what I think it is. Because the cookies look great. The light coming on the cookie and then getting darker as it goes around to the edge. Real nice. The same on these cookies. Nice having the uh, shadow underneath each of these. Set looks good. Horizon straight. Um, I think you've got this little space here. You got a big space here with the milk. I'd bring the milk in or take that out a little bit so that the spaces between the items are the same. You want to watch your spacing. If we set the milk too far out, it doesn't look like part of the team. Um, if, you're, if it's in the middle and it's anywhere in the middle of the shot and it's too far from everything else, then it appears to be the subject, even though in this particular case, I think the cookies are the subject. I think they hold the uh, idea of being the subject because of the warmth of them and the fact that they have all the texture. So I like your leading line here, getting us back via the straw. All right, Ling. Uh, Carla McMahon. Hi, John. Hi, Carla. Nice, uh, like we know the light's coming from back over there. Catching yeah. our eggs here, here, right in there. Got the milk. Little high, I love the little light on the edge of the rim here. Lots of light here, Carla. Really pretty. Highlight on the cho on the chocolate going dark. Lots of dimension, lots of shape. We got shape against everything. Your camera, your point of view going straight across to these uh, to this bottle of milk and to this uh, uh, pot of something with a spoon in it. It just gives us the shape of what we're shooting. I like it. Cool. What is the we got behind the scenes here? Probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's all natural light. Uh huh. It's just coming window light from the right. Okay. And then black card on the left, and then the white card behind the black card that gives the little highlights on the left hand side of the milk bottle. Uh huh. And the little bowl as well. That. Right yeah. there is what she's yeah, talking about I on the spoon. Yeah. Yep. And then you can see it's black here. And then just that little strip of white is held there so that you can you can see it in the bottle. Real nice. Yeah. Did you um have a long exposure? No. Um uh Yes, I suppose it was about one over 15 seconds. Okay. One, one fifteenth of a second. Okay. 15th? So, yeah, it was quite long, I suppose. <laughs> and what was your aperture? It, um, my aperture was f11, and I even had to focus stack um, because I was shooting at about 105 mils. So I shot, I think it's about three shots that I manually just blended together. I shot different parts of the image in focus and then just put it together because I, it was quite spread out. So I wasn't getting everything in focus. Okay. How many focus, how many frames did you do? Uh, I think three. It was only three. And I just manually did it. I focused like on the, the cocoa in the front and then on the flower and then on the back of the eggs. And I just... And blended those together. Okay. You use Photoshop for that? Yes. Very nice. Nice. Really nice. Nice shot, Carla. Sarah, real simple, real pretty. Thank you. There's, there's, they're just photographic, aren't they? Or photogenic, I guess is the word. It's yep. like asparagus or, you, you know, go to the store. If you want to shoot something, grab some asparagus. I mean, they're just fun to shoot. Real pretty, very dark um, and moody. And using this front asparagus as our as our um, subject, 
uh, by by the nature of it being in the middle and being only these three are in focus, everything else starts to go out of focus. Light and shadow. Don, is the, the, the little nib that's behind the, the main character there, is that distracting? Yeah, right, that one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about taking it out. Yep. Um, I also tried to make it dark behind the lighter side and light behind the darker side, but it's a little hard to tell on Photoshop or in uh, Facebook. Well, maybe um, I would take it out and see what it looks like. That little nib? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like there's some warmth back there too, Sarah. Is, is it the car, card you used? No, I mean, literally, it, it's, um, well, I guess, I mean, it's a painted background that I painted. Um, so it could just be the colors that are in the background. But I, I flagged off the light in the front. So it's just that the light's hitting the back on that side. Yeah. And, yeah, and I like it. I like a little bit of a gradient back there. Thanks. Really pretty. This Again, this would make a beautiful big print. Thank you. Just, Thank you. Uh, just fun. So there's your light. So the buff's going through a scrim, got a white field card. Yeah, you do have a warm background. Flagging it off, good. Yep. Yeah. What's the, what's the blue paper for? Well, when we did the splash assignment a couple weeks ago, I put it on the ground and I ah. keep thinking I'm gonna do another splash. So I'm hesitant to take it up. Yeah, you'll, you'll, want, you'll, need, a, you'll need it there the moment you take it up. So it, well, that's it. So I'm just going to leave it there until we're done here, and then we'll figure yeah. it out from there. But I put the pool away because everybody, every time I get on a Zoom call, people are like, "Why do you have a pool in the background?" <laughs> so looks I got really rid good. Of that at least looks really good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. By the way, I have not forgotten your cards you sent me. Um, okay. I'm, I made a few more. Okay, I'm kind of working on. I'm having a hard time with them, so we'll discuss it. Okay. Um, no, yeah, let me know if you want to catch up. Yeah, we we will. I'm having a bit of a what we're going what what we're going to do with them. So yeah, we'll, I think that's we'll probably good. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Bye. Uh, this is lovely, Mark. Thanks, Don. Really, I look. The tones are great, man. Did you um, pull out some saturation or anything? I did. Yes. Yeah, I got it. You were the one that told me that Analog Effects Pro could be really addictive. Yeah. Oh, Lordy, you were right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be. There's some uh, really nice uh, effects in there. And then I don't know if you noticed, but all, all, every effect you can dial it in about 50 different ways. That's what I did notice. That I was really playing around with this, and I just I had fun with it. Yep. And then you, you take that, that layer and then blend mode it with another layer. And, you know, Photoshop, you could just stay up all night working with one image and just, just have a blast with it. That's um, true. Yeah, I really like this. I like where you put your um, horizon line. Yeah, I made that a deliberate choice. Yeah, going through this. So that's going off. And then the roundness of this vase coming in there and you just cut it right at the roundness. That's great. That's really great. Uh, now you have a, a you have two types of composition going on. One is dynamic where this this guy is in front of the vase. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you have the everything in its place where the plate is set away from this guy. So what I want you to do is when you're working on a composition, make up your mind because when you move the plate away from the two dynamic things, it looks like they're connected and it's not. Okay. You're, you, you're okay with this shot. You say because it's in the shadow here. So it doesn't, it's not, you know, it's only something that I see for, to warn you about because this shot's fine. It's not going to hurt your shot. But have the plate, if you're going to have this in front of that one, have the plate come a little bit over the front of that thing like there. So then we keep okay. everything dynamic. If it's everything in its place, then the space between everything that's in its place must be reasonably similar 
because if at one point one item has more space around it than everything else, it's automatically going to be the hero, even if it's not because of that space around it. I see okay. what you mean. Yeah, very cool. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Don. What lens, sir? Uh, it was my 24 to 70, and it was at 36 millimeters. All right. Very good. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. How fun. It's like a lot of work went into that. Oh, yeah, I like the color. It, it is over there better than this yellow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Good choice. <laughs> yellow is yellow, buddy. Bonnie. Bonnie Mitchell. Hey, Don. Hi, Hi Bonnie. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. I uh, love the fact that we can see your candle is lit there. That's really nice. Um, the edges of this and this lit against the dark background gives us dimension uh, and shape. The only thing, Bonnie, is that we brought our swans face down with the black bill right into the black part of the lantern. You yeah, see that? I, I, I do. I tried to get a little reflection you know, uh, on the bill to kind of set it apart, but it wasn't really, uh, it, yeah, you're right. It does kind of disappear there. Yeah. Um, what were you, you were trying to like shine a light on it to get a little highlight? Well, a reflection. I was using a, a small silver reflector trying to reflect a little light on there. Okay. Because there was a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a light hitting it from the window, but In behind the scenes here, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's just a uh, also a mass, just the mass of the beak and the mass of the black there, uh, maybe turned the, the 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 swan a little bit towards us, maybe. Um, uh, or or get this back a little bit. Uh, maybe if the beak was coming into this part of it, it might not be so bad. It's just coming into this where all the mass of the black is back there. That's where the beak is. So yeah, you're yeah. right. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, love the material. I love it. it looks Thank great. You. Great background, and I and the way the light is picking up uh, the edges of this. Letting it go dark on the other edges, the back edges, gives it a lot of dimension. Really good. It does have a kind of a 3D effect, right? Yeah. 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 This um, dark neck against the bright here, the bright neck against the dark there, you know, all of these bright here against the dark in the background here, all of those things give us uh, dimension. Really cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. JT Media. Don. Hey there. Look at that cake. Yeah, it was a good cake. Yeah, it looks like a good cake. <laughs> um, so what's your lighting on this? So I had a uh, studio continuous light on the left hand side so very low and then to the right at a 45 degree angle i had a strobe okay all right you only had one strobe on it yeah okay um, Did I have had two? Yeah, I think you needed one coming from the back. Okay. I think you needed one back there shining this way. So we get a little pop here and a little pop on these edges here. And, and that kind of light, um, I call a kicker light because yeah. it really isn't going to add anything to your exposure. It's just going to put an edge on things. Right. Uh, and I think I, I shot this 
I wish I would have, in hindsight, I was not shooting tethered. So I usually shoot tethered, but I wasn't in this case. And I didn't realize I had it at a 4.5 f-stop. I wish I would have shot it at 11. I think ah, that okay. might have two. Okay. Is this two shots put together? It's just one. Okay. Yeah. Well, how did the cake come in so sharp with this is not sharp? I don't know, but it is just one. I think because I was pretty far back, you can't even see the camera in my behind the scene shot. I think I was so far back that a lot more of it got in focus than it probably should have been. Okay. I, I don't know how that happened. I think if, tell me if I'm right, this cloth is going back up underneath this cake pan, right? That's true. Okay. So the cloth is really the farthest thing away. That's the cake true. is closer to the rose. Yeah. Right. And you were shooting with like what kind of lens? It was a 105 macro. Okay. Yeah, and normally when I try to do these, I would have shot it more at f11. I think not being tethered, I didn't realize I wasn't shooting that. It was very hard to tell just on camera. So, sure. yeah. Sure. Very nice. Thanks. Uh, I don't think the shot's there yet, but I think you got an idea for it. Yeah. Okay, I love the idea of the roses. Uh, when you're doing the napkins, um, the hardest thing you'll ever do is use a napkin. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, I guarantee it. Because um, you think, well, that'll be a nice fold. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, got little lines here. And I then this really thing comes struggle. over here. Oh, yeah. I know. And it comes over here and you bend it back and you get the kink in it, right? And then now I that, did it that, without it and then it looked too plain because it was. Oh, I know. Bit. It's so, really. Yeah. It's like, it's like you kind of go, how do they do this? Well, and the truth is they've got little rolls of newspaper and toilet paper and, you know, and they're just tucking it in there. Um, uh, putting the, the silverware out and lighting the silverware, that's easy. Getting the napkins to look good folded, that's the hard part. It's true. And, and the, uh, the stylist that walks in or the assistant walks in and says, hey, I had the, the, um, Napkins to dry clean and added, added extra starch. Oh, that's that's like <laughs> homicide time right there. Nicely done there, Jennifer. Thank you. Yes. Sophie. Sophie. No Sophie. Love the colors, the blues and the greens. Light from the side. Here's our dim dimension. Highlights, shadow, highlights, shadow. Highlights all the way across here. Um, tomatoes, tomatoes going up into the background. Um, side light is really nice. Looks like we've got a big side light from here. Now that looks like oh, there it is octobox. You can see the oct. You can see the sides in there. So we got the octobox up here, and then she's got something over there. Do you see it? It's that little one, little white bright thing. I think there's a little one there. It's a little bit there. There it is there. Uh, so there's something over here putting some light back in to the dark side of the, of the, the bread there and the dark side of this. Really nice, Sophie. Nicely done. Nicely done. Let's see. Kevin Richardson. All right, Dylan. Yeah, I'm in. How are you? That's about, that's about. All right, so you've got uh, gradient on your background. You've got uh, light from the side, which gives a shape to the barrels and these transitions right in here. Tells us exactly what we got going on. Highlight on there tells us that these are painted and shiny. Yeah, cool. So is there a behind the scenes? Yeah, next one along, yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, it was one of my trial ones, and uh, it's, it ended up as my main one. Just trying them out just to see what would happen. Sure. Shapes. Barrow, that was the, 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 the ch children's um, building bricks and whatever. I thought, well, there's shapes and colours, and that's what we'll go for. That. And then I've tried, I've tried many other things, and they, they just didn't come. So I've ended up coming back to this one. I've, you know, it's just plain, simple as it was. That's Yep. One of the things that happens when we've got this bright red here, 
and it's a shiny surface. Do you see how the red on this side almost goes black? Yeah, yeah. So you got to watch those. You got to figure out what's the angle that you're going to do. You don't want these to go black. They're going too dark here. Uh, the barrels, on the other hand, have a little bit more tooth to them. So as they go around the side, well, they got this other barrel here too, but as they go around the side, they're still picking up a little bit of light where this guy, you've got to turn in so far away from the light, we didn't get any light on them. So watch out for that. Because if you, if you take your, your eyes, if you go back a little bit and you squint at the picture, just kind of try to eliminate half of it, you lose this whole yeah. corner here. Uh, where the green just jumps out because it's green. And then these guys are lit, you know, they're pretty well lit up there. Yeah. So, Do you think if, uh, uh, Dave, if you'll have a look at the, the setup picture, if I'd have brought a card round, another card in at the front. Yeah. Uh, where this was a card in the front. Down it to, to, to catch that triangle. I think yeah. that would have worked. Yeah. Card. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. If you put a card, you, you put a card up front here like leaning up against the camera, you know, you got the camera here and you got your set here and you take a white card and just lean it right up against the, the part of the tripod there. So you got yeah. a white card going right up. Um, that'll open up this, that'll open up this right here. Even if this becomes a gradient, dark over here, but brighter there, we'll feel it. We'll yeah. feel it in there. Yeah, so, I mean, to, to, to be fair, Don, I did say that. I saw the, on the barrels, that's what the card, the card in the clamps there for that's to pick up that, just that slight highlight on the on the barrels mm -hmm. I didn't, so i didn't notice that sort of fading into into the into the black really yeah 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 so there a, is. Like a rolling stones record and I, I see a red door and i want to paint it black <laughs> yeah hey yeah 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 it's so, good yeah. good it those are yeah. those are great little toys to play with um you will learn a tremendous amount playing with those cards, Kevin. Yeah. Those, those, those yeah. little toys there. Um, I'd get those toys, get that uh, camera on a tripod, set them up, and then using cards, really play with that window light. Just set them right up in front of the window and spend two hours yeah. with yeah. Uh, light cards and filter and uh, diffusers and everything. Yeah. You learn a tremendous amount. Richard. I don't. Hi, Richard. This is a toy toy car. Yes, it is. All right. Okay, so what are we doing here? Tell us what we're doing here. Uh, I, I saw almost the shot you're seeing here uh, as a 3D render from a different car manufacturer, a computer model. And I thought I'd, I'd try that uh, and try to make a real picture out of it. And it started out uh, really, really bad and uh, took a lot more work than I initially thought because this, this little car has a paint on it that reflects almost everything around it. So I had to change the, the clamps uh, which yeah. hold, uh, held the, the paper because uh, it reflected the red from the clamps and it reflected the, the yellow from the clamps. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. So it took a lot of light, a lot of modification, and uh, uh, some time. <laughs> they, you know, they're building models um, not quite this small. I think they're 124. They're, you know, like this big. They're building models of the cars, and the shooters are coming in and using the models uh, to shoot the cars and then dropping the cars down into landscapes. I read some articles, and I found uh, this guy, Hernandez, I guess, uh -huh. is his name. Yeah, uh, he's shooting really impressive stuff uh, with models. Yeah, yeah. When you got Photoshop and you can clean up little things like with a model, you know, you get these these lines that get too thick here. Yeah, you know, these lines here get too thick um, in a model car. It's too much, and but you can take them down so they look more real, like they'd really be, uh, you know, working. That's nice, Richard. So here's your, your behind the scenes. Is yep. I learned a lot about lighting in this example. Let's pull up this behind the scenes so we can take a look.
cool. I started out with uh, Flash A, the window light. So that's uh, just a uh, cutout from, from black paper and I glued white paper on, on the backside and lit that with a flash directly lit. Yeah. So there's nothing else oh. behind that. Uh, started out with this one. Then I added the, the reflector just to see if I get enough light uh, from from background to the foreground and reflect that back it was not enough, so I added Flash B, that uh, uh, soft box with the cover removed, so there is only the the middle uh, diffuser in it, mm -hmm. and that gave me enough light to light the car pretty well. It looked okay, but uh, missed some of the highlights, so I added C and D, especially D. C was optional i c could be replaced with uh, a different silver reflector easily okay. so c right. is really yeah. not that necessary I, I tried different things and silver reflector did almost the same thing because c was uh so low it's not really necessary to use a flash at this point and you're uh, using you f20 yes yeah. and it's for uh, it's uh, focus stacked there's okay. uh, these are uh 13 pictures very well done Really well done, Richard. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I had trouble with the uh, focus stacking in Photoshop in this kind of the, the initial try when I just stacked everything and didn't modify it at mm -hmm. first. Uh, it really came out wonky. So there, it was uneven. It destroyed the picture. It was necessary to auto align the picture, so use the auto align uh, function from Photoshop and then stack it. Cool. I think you're supposed to use the auto align, right? I just looked at the Florin tutorial and uh, he just jumped into it and said use uh, photo stacking and that's it. So, first two trials and stacking alone failed you, and you, then you'll, you'll You'll find that sometimes when you're you're changing focus, it moves the, the object. It did, yes. Um, and that then it you know kind of jumps in it, and you've got to get them lined up. Same thing with the stop motion. You know, well if you bump the camera, start over. You know, just start over because something's moved. So very cool, Donna. Hello, Don. Hi, Donna. How are you? I'm not, not too bad. How are you? Very good. Um, if you put a white card right here, just lay it down on the ground right here, and you bring it way out here and curve it up like that, you'll get the prism thing in the in the oh, lens right. that you see. That's what it is. Is that white is going uh, right back in? I um, struggled with this. I really struggled. <laughs> well, you got your light up front here. Yeah. And that's not where we want to put it. We want to put it on the side. We want this highlight to come down the side. Okay. Now, we don't want the highlight to come down the exact side because you've, you're, you've chosen to use a bright background. Yeah. We've got to have a little dark here so that it meets that, that dark background. But you needed, you've right. got your light up front. You needed it over there. Okay. This okay. one's great. That's exactly where that one needs to go here. Okay. Um, Hmm, why is this different than this here? What? I don't know. I, my behind the scenes is the next shot. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay. Um, for this kind of shot, I don't want you to ever put your light up front. Okay. It's got to be, this is your subjects. It's either got to be a side light or move it around. Camera's up here, by the way. Yeah. Okay, camera's up here. Move this around to back. So it's either got to be on the side or to the back. The okay. only thing that can go up front is a fill card. So if you do have it in the back, which you could easily do with these, these lenses, is putting a light from the back. Then you can put cards up here to light your lenses up. So okay. I'll show you. We'll go back to the other shot. You could have put a, that, your light back there. When you fired that light, you wouldn't see much. 
You'd be like, yeah. why did Don tell me to put the car, the light back there? I'm not seeing anything. You'll get a little, you know, pop right yeah. along there. You won't, what you're doing is you're shining the light from back there. And then when you put up the white fill card, boom, the thing just lights up. So just, I was trying, I was aiming to get one of those shots with the lit up background, mm -hmm. but I, I struggled with it, obviously. But so how would I do that? Well, let's look at your like you know, I have a light shining on the background underneath yeah, the table. It's a big stage light. It's too bright, but um, I had to borrow all this stuff. Um, well, well and one thing, your stage light is shining. Here's your camera. Your stage light is shining up in the middle of them, right? Yeah. Aim it down. So, in other words, if this is the table. Yeah. And again, camera's over here. You've got this light turned down. So on your background, you're only getting the edge of the light. Oh, okay. All the power of the light is going down here. Okay. You're just going to get the edge. And you keep looking through the camera until that light is just very, very subtle. And then you know you've got the spot. The other thing okay. is, uh, and now this is a, this is a, a this is a, uh, you said a stage light. This is a hot yeah, light, my, right? It's, it's a big LED light. Oh, it's an LED. Okay. Yeah. LEDs are better. So you yeah. got your background here. If your LED is back here, it's spreading the light a lot. Yeah. Right. If you if you move your light up to here, choke it off. Oh. Move your light three inches away. Turn it on. Oh, oh it's really bright right there. And then it just kind of fizzles okay. out there. And you can play with. That's how you can get the the little bit more of a rounded curve to oh, it. Okay. You can just choke it out. Sometimes you can have them an inch and a half away from the background and get plenty of little spray light coming up behind your subject. But again, 99% of the lights going under the table, just okay. blasting down there, we're only getting that edge. So if I was to do that, then where would I put my flash that I have in the front? Where you would put I put it, that? Okay, so you're Lenses are standing up here and the camera's yeah. here. Okay. You're going to put that flash right back there. It's not, when you fire it, it's not going to do anything. You're going to go, I don't get it. I don't even get it. Why <laughs> am I doing that? It's for the white cards. Okay. You're going to put multiple so is it off white to the cards. side on an angle? No, right behind it. Right behind. Okay. Right behind it. Coming right okay. into the camera. Okay. Okay. You I might, and if it's, if it's, Shining in the camera, you might have to put a flag, you know, to flag it okay. off. So, uh, yeah, okay. right, right, coming right straight back. All right. Very Thanks. cool. Good job. Thank you. Yep. Jerry. Jerry, are you here? Oh, too bad. Jerry, darn it. These are nice, nice shot. Really well done. Um, nice little gradient thing going on in the back. We've got the dark side against the light. We've got some nice light in here. Very pretty light there against the dark side. Uh, fill is solid right there. I love the, the, the tools and the light on the tool looks great. Um, you're coming right straight up into it right there. Ha, horizon's in the right line, line there. Uh, nothing wrong with the shot, Jerry. Uh, might be a little bit dark in here, might be, I don't know. Uh, but I'd also, I'd also, I love the way this one's all lit. All of this is lit. All of this is lit. We get a little dark in there. Uh, I would go and grab a uh, light room uh, and just bring those up in there, bring those up just a little bit. So those flowers have some feeling of light. Your shadows going to the side down here are subtle, but they're enough to remind us that the light is, it is side lit. Nicely done, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, are you there? Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Let's go look at you behind the scenes if you got one. All right. So w w this light is lighting up your background? Well, actually, I, I, I didn't actually use it in that particular shot afterwards. I struggled okay. with it. So I okay. left it off. Uh, one of the things that you're struggling with is you're way too close to your background. Okay. So no matter what, when you fired that flash, it lit up your flowers, right? It did a little bit of that, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I can, yeah. And the other thing is it's just so 
harsh there. So if you can back up, you want to have, mathematically speaking, here's your wall and here's your set uh, here. The math for this distance is uh, as much as you can get. <laughs> That's it. Okay. So uh, four feet, five feet, something like that would be great. Then you're working with a separate palette back here than you right. are up here. You've got your soft lighter here. You've got your fill cards here and your two vases here. Nothing you're doing up here is doing anything with that. Then you can bring your light in over here and you start creating and fussing with that light back there. You're only bringing them together in the camera. Because when they're this close, no matter what you do, everything is affecting everything else. That's yeah. the okay. hardest part. That's one of the reasons why you rarely ever hear a photographer say, uh, my studio's too big. <laughs> nope. Nope. Guy I shared space with, we, we shot a 35-foot bass boat in that studio, and he still wished it was bigger. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Well done, sir. Thank you. Well done. Potato. Potato, potato. Yeah. It's rather simple. <laughs> God, I'd, I'd give you a million dollars for that if I had it. <laughs> well, I put it on the counter. I was rearranging things. I put on the counter and I thought it was bright on one side and dark on the other. Ooh, I should, it's got shapes, unusual mm -hmm. colors. I should try to light it so that it shows and try to wrap it around the back and everything. So that was my goal. Looks like a, looks like a sad little whale. I know it does. I was like, oh no, it's got a face. Will I be able to eat it now? <laughs> you did. <laughs> Not yet tonight. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you got a little fill on this side. You got some yep. shape and dimension to it. Yep. Yep, I was playing with some little ceramic statue things and stuff, but when I saw this, I thought, well, this is kind of hard because it's dull and kind of ugly and... <laughs> Potatoes are potatoes are fascinating. The, who who remembers? Does anyone remember how much the potato shot sold for a couple of years ago? Was no. it a million dollars? No, really. Oh yeah. Uh, you thought I was kidding? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. 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 Um, let's see here. Million dollar. Potato. There you go. Million dollar potato photo. You thought I was kidding. Yes, I did. <laughs> and oh, there no. it is. Oh my gosh. He sold it for a million dollars. Wow. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> and when I look at it, I have absolutely Sarah's going, oh dang. <laughs> <laughs> um I look at it, I go, and I'm going to be really honest with everybody here. Very honest. I just don't think it's worth more than $750,000. I'm just, <laughs> just, just not getting the million there. If uh, he had duct tape across it, he could have gotten two million. Well, or or some uh, caution tape, cop caution yeah. tape. Those are that's what. Well, then it would have to wear stripper heels. But we're getting into a whole different line of dark. Very good. Thank you. There you go. There you go, window, card, yeah, potato. Uh, yes, or potato. potato. On, on, my, on my cat's little table, her window table, she was very distraught. <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, again, you know, I, I'm gonna be very, very serious here, serious here. A shot like this doesn't capture anyone's imagination. No. But, but if you had a piece of broccoli shot like this, a single stalk of green onion shot like this, et cetera. Then you're saying, okay, you're creating a set of images that could be kind of fun, Terry. Yep. You That's really could. Yep. You know, you really could. Um, I, I probably would have put some garlic with it, but I had no other veggies. I need to go to the store. Yep. But I was pleased that I got the back of the, the underneath of it all the way around to the back, actually. I actually was able to bring the light around so... Uh huh. I thought it worked pretty good for. Very good. 
Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. You bet. Sputter, you. A sputter shot. Yeah. Carmen. Yes. I'm still Carmen. like thinking about I'm still thinking about the potato. Yeah. Carmen, <laughs> Carmen's gonna find that guy and say and offer offer him a million and a half. He's gonna yeah. up the stake. <laughs> I personally, I think it was a PR ploy, but uh, people say it wasn't. They said, no, the guy actually saw the, the picture on the, on the photographer's wall and said, how much? And the photographer said a million dollars. And the guy said, okay. So, I think that month, uh, the potato industry sold 11 million more potatoes to starving photographers all over the world. But I don't think that's going to happen again. <laughs> Can you eat the potato? <laughs> yeah. So tell us about this shot. The light is very soft through here. Nice little highlights right in there. Very soft. The, sh the uh, background gives us lots of dimension because you've gradient, gradiented it. Uh, I don't know what that word is. Gradient. To, to, photography uh, word. It's a so, photography yeah, word. I don't know how to say gradient and that's what you did here. You added a gradient and the gradient is falling off, but your subject isn't falling off. And so that gives us a lot of dimension in here. Um, it looks a little flat or a little underexposed to me, just a little. Carmen, did, are you going for? I, I wanted a moody photograph. It is, yeah, it is that. Uh -huh. Good job with folding the napkin. How long did that take? Oh, I just, tossed it there oh did you and yeah and it yeah. landed perfectly or yeah, it landed with any... folds so that well you got folds but you don't have kinks in it no that's, that's cool it's actually my dish towel it's nice and soft yeah i like how your composition keeps working out this is a dynamic composition everything is in front of something else in front of the beans this goes in front of the lid the spoon goes in front of that uh, all the way up here we get the beans running up here, it's really well done. It's very pretty light. Very it's, pretty light. Uh, it's with a scrim, scrim from the back, and I had a, a flash from the right hit, hitting a gold reflector to kind of warm it up. You can see the highlights in the dark beans. Not ah, much. okay. And uh, let's see. And I used the coffee filter to give highlights to the pot, the jar in the back. Uh huh. And I had a white fill card to get underneath the um, the piece of wood that has the the uh, the beans. Yeah, I like and I like the way this is bright here and gradient down to dark there. That's nice as well. There's a lot of shapes and uh, dimension in it. What lens? Oh, 35 millimeter at f16. And is that a strobe? You got an octobox. Is that a strobe or is that continuous light, Carmen? A strobe. A strobe. strobe. Very cool. Yeah, I shot it. It's like I spent 90% of my time, I was shooting lower and across. And that's the other picture. And then at the very end, when I, it's in the comments. Sorry. Um, at the very end, I, uh, I said, oh, let me just take it from above. And darn, <laughs> that's what I like better. It's it's under the below the behind the scenes, yeah. Hmm. I like this one better. The overhead. Yeah, I like this one better. Oh, oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I do. Um. Can't tell you what did you turn the over? Did you flip the overhead? You had yes. to flip it. Okay. No, no, I flipped this one. Oh, you flipped this, this one? one? Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I like it. I like uh, everything just leads me back. I just um Alrighty then. But you know, it, it that doesn't mean I don't like this one. Okay. Doesn't mean I don't like this one. It just means I think, I think this one's just a little bit more interesting. In yeah, the, the other one is flatter. Field. I I think the other one is flatter. I agree with that. Yeah, and, and there's this, just this nice leading me all the way back to here. Is this focus stacked? Yes. Good, good. Yeah. 
Yeah. And this looks focused, Dak. And that's part of what I really like about it. That one is mm. probably focused, Dak, as well. Um, no, I was at F16 no, at 35. So, yeah. yeah. So what it is, is I've seen this before. What, okay. what, I, what I'm, I'm charmed by this one is I keep, my eye keeps coming down waiting for these beans to go out of focus and they're not going out of focus and he's not going out of focus. And it's like, hmm, starts to remind me of a big four by five transparency with a tilted front on the, on the, the four by five. We don't see these shots very much anymore. We used to, if you're going back to the, the eighties and uh, the nineties, and you're looking at uh, still life shots, you'll see shots like this because we could tilt and swing our, our camera. Uh, but when digital came in in 2000, uh, all the digital cameras are all 35 millimeter configurations, right? And other than Hasselblad. Mm -hmm. They're all 35 millimeter. There, no, one was, no one came in and said, let's make a four by five digital camera. Well, they, they made some, but they were impossible to purchase. They were too expensive in a four inch by five inch sensor. I didn't think they make them. Uh, all your four by five cameras are um, smaller sensors than four by five. They're more like six by seven um, centimeters. So, uh, and that's what I like about it. I just, I just like it. So, Good. Yeah. Well, that's where I spent most of my time. And then the, I don't know, I, I kind of liked the, the intimacy. This. Yep, yeah, yeah, they like had it. a little bit of intimacy yeah. uh, that I that I also liked. Yep, very nice, Carmen. Okay. Very, very Thank nice. You. Phyllis, is Phyllis here? Oh, darn it. Okay, Phyllis, a lovely highlight coming down here. Uh, Phyllis said in the in the comments that she wanted to really bring out the texture of this, and you did nicely, Phyllis. I see the. I see something happening down here, which caught my eye. I wonder if that is, if that is, oops, sorry, boom. All right, um, okay, that wasn't, I thought Phyllis was contacting me there. Uh, this looks really good, Phyllis. I think your background, I think you'd be better off putting it on a surface. Right there, putting it on a surface and letting the background go black and then using a white card over here, you know, back behind it and over here, back behind it a little bit. And then your, your light that you have here would give you a nice highlight here. This card's gonna give you that edge that card's gonna give you that edge against a darker background. All of this is gonna be lit up by this light here because it's that chiseled crystal. You'll have no problem getting this to light up and your cards will work really well too. Bring them all the way down. Obviously, I just sort of stopped there and to bring them all the way down. Uh, lovely shot there. Uh, I think you're on to something. I'd like to see you keep going there, Phyllis. Get the shot right. Oh, and we're done. Did I miss anybody? Oh, oh, Dan, you missed mine. No, I got yours, Ling. Were you not oh, here? Yeah, I'll watch it later. But on this previous shot, I was curious. It looked like the sh it looked like it was crooked a little bit. All right, like let's the go. The shape of the base of the cup on that previous shot. I'm curious what that cup actually looks like. This it's one. Right, it's right. Um, it kind of in the middle. It it looked off to me and I didn't know if it was like a rectangular or a square kind of like stem or are you talking are you talking about this image here yeah yeah I think it's I think it's round uh oh. but that that's square down there do you see that yeah that's square down there I it I it looks to me like it's oh that wait a minute maybe it's chiseled it's a little bit difficult to pull out here what's going on there um, yeah, I'm curious to see another shot. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much, um, you know, work in the crystal there. It's gonna be very, very challenging to uh, pull it out. You can, you can, you can get it. Um, all right, so let's go back here. Who? Someone said I missed their picture. Who is that? It's Chris. Chris, the one, the, the one with the bracelet and the gold and the coins on the brick. That one right there. 
This one? Yeah. Yeah, what's going on here? Well, I I put the light on the side and then no, 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 I, no, 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 no. it. Oh, hold for yeah, this is totally warped and and um skewed. I, I what 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 is happening with the uh the picture? Those aren't they're not round, they're being pulled. Because I stacked it in, in the Photoshop. Hmm. Okay. Tell me what you wanted to do because these are are that penny is just I mean can't think of the word. They're distorted as heck here. I don't think you wanted distorted images, did you? No, I I did not want the distorted images. I just wanted a straight one with I can create the shadows on it. Okay. It, so it looks to me that when you were focus stacking, you were moving the camera. Right. You don't move the camera. You don't move the camera? You only change the focus. So you need to have a rail. Uh, no, you can do it on a tripod. You okay. You can do it on a tripod. Um, my, my hero shot is the bracelet. Right. That's what I'm trying to get that attention right. on that. So you can, you can do it without rails if you have, I mean, you're very, this is a very tiny shot. It's only what, six inches wide. So you bring your camera down with your tripod and okay. frame it. And then you just, you just move your focus from the front of this, this jewelry here, the front of it, through to the back of it back here. Okay. You do it, uh, um, you need to get a piece of software to do it. To do it easily, you gotta get a piece of software called Helicon. Yeah. Um, it cannot be done in, in Photoshop? It can, um, but it, Photoshop is more of a, uh, it's more kludgy in Photoshop. I mean, it's just more, uh, it's more tricky, I guess, the best, easiest so to at, say that. So at what f-stop would you be taking these pictures, like f f11, f16, and f18? No, you don't change your aperture. You don't change that? No, you just, only change your focus. Them. Okay. The only okay. thing that changes is your focus. So you just focus up front, and then you focus a little bit farther back, a little bit farther back. And then when you focus and you stack them up in Photoshop, um, who, do, who uses Photoshop for it? Anyone here? For focus I stacking, do. I do. Yeah, I do. I have. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's not, it's not brilliant. It's not the best one. <laughs> It's it's not the best source, uh, Carmen. How do you do it? The the focus stacking. Yeah. Well, well, I shoot it. I just I I have the camera on a tripod and it's fixed, and I'll focus near the front, mm -hmm. focus somewhere in the middle, and focus somewhere near the back. I take it into Photoshop, do the auto align, and then they do the auto blend. And there you go. Eighty per eighty percent of the time, it looks fine. Yeah, and so this, what? if you shot this picture at f twenty two. Uh -huh. You'd probably only have to do three shots. So what, 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 it, what it looks like is that it was realigned, but la for landscape was, rather than for the focus stacking. No, no, he was moving his camera as he was. Ah, moving. okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, my, my other question is when I'm done with the images, I'm trying to shrink the image. It's like my file is 21, 22,000 pixel and my computer just, just cannot handle it. It shouldn't be, your, your file shouldn't be any bigger than the, than the um, RAM. frame size. Are you talking about the frame size changes? Yeah. Oh yeah, because you're moving your camera. Okay. You're moving the camera. When you shoot it all in one spot, uh, what, what, what size, what camera do you have? I have Nikon 8. eight 800. Okay, so you have uh, Nikon 800, so that's a 36 megapixel image. Correct. Right, so when you shoot four of those, if you shot four of those for this, or let's say you shoot three, 
you're going to have a little bit over 100 megabytes. You right. put them, they're all in layers. So the first shot's in layer one, first, second shot's layer two, third shot's in layer three. You hit auto align. Okay. It'll align those layers. And then you use blend, uh, blend mode. Uh, what's the, uh, what's the blend mode, Carmen? The blend. It's auto, auto blend. It's right, auto right blend. underneath. It's right okay. underneath auto align. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But don't move your camera. Don't change your f-stop and don't move your lighting. Just, okay. just the focus. So you, you should do this with manual focus, not yeah. auto. Yeah, I do right. do it manually. Try it, okay, thank you. Try it again. Stick it up in the uh, in the uh, on the page and tag me. All right. Okay. Thank you very all much. All right. You bet. Ron, this isn't specific to Chris's photo, but how does a focus stacking rail work? It actually moves the lens. It's rails are for very close subjects, like close up stuff. Instead of instead of um, the the rails have little marks on them so you could just you twist it to the mark make the shot twist it to the mark you're actually instead of changing the elements inside the lens you're moving the lens but aren't you changing the composition at the same time uh, uh i don't know i don't use rails okay i don't use them I haven't, I, I'm more of a landscape shooter. So I've, I've, I've only, the only um, uh, focus stacking that I've done is, is with Helicon and it's more of a uh, outside kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. See what I, that's what I do, Don. I, I set it up and I move me, me, me focus point. Um, you know, like the variable focus point where you can move it in different blocks. Mm -hmm. and I just gradually move it up the picture. So I, I set off at the bottom with, 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 with my focus points in the bottom. You know, my fo focus points at the bottom and then gradually just click it up on it and set the next one to click the next one clear and gradually yeah. move it up, up. And then, as you say, then take it into Photoshop and do it that way. But yeah, you're doing it. it. You're doing it with the, the, the uh, auto focus buttons inside. Uh, Spots? Yeah, I'm not even aware. Well, yeah, it's his. It's his you know, auto. Nope. Look. Yeah, the only problem, the only problem I have with that, you got to touch the camera to do that. So. So every time you touch the camera, you risk moving the camera, six or twenty yeah. pixels. Well, so I, I will say, I will say, you're gonna, you, you're gonna, you're still gonna touch the camera, right? About touching the lens. So move the focus point to another area of your, your, your image. Okay, let 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 me stop this. Yeah. Can you put your hand in the bathroom? No, no. Yeah, you do. You you do run that risk. Um. Let me take a. One of the things you can do um, also is uh, well, depending on the camera. Who has a camera that has that has that has uh, focus stacking in it? Lumix has it built yeah. in. The problem with Lumix. My my Z7. The Nikon Z7 has it, right? Yeah. The D850 as well. The D850? Yeah. Do you get do you get multiple shots or does it do it in the camera? The Lumix does it, but when you get it out, it's a JPEG. No, I get multiple shots. Multiple layers. Yeah. 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 You get the option on the Z7, either one. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the Lumix does it does a really nice job, but you don't get a raw file out. It does it actually mm -hmm. does it in camera, so it, it serves you out a uh, a JPEG, which you know if you're if you're uh, hiking or something like that, it's probably just fine. But uh, we'll uh, we'll look into uh, some focus stacking. Where is Ling's picture? Ling, are you here? Yep. Where is your picture? It's in the middle, right there. The pink one. The pink one. Oh. The pink bright ones. This one. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Did uh, you've got some good separation here? Uh, let's see. There's two of them here, right? One's. 
Oh, you had a vertical and a horizontal. I like your horizontal much better than your vertical. How come? Much better. Much better. You're getting into the, the cookie. Yeah, it, there's a couple of things. Um, the distance here is 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 closer to the distance there, and so it really makes a more uh, cohesive picture. When I go over to this one, look at the distance here. Oh yeah. And here. And that's what I commented on when I first looked at the shot. That's a that's that that sets the milk apart. On the other shot, the milk is part of the picture, uh, and it for me it just changes the whole picture. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is, I didn't need to see the top of the flowers to get it. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Uh, the cookies, the, the very warmth of the cookies, very nice. You get a little bit of separation here, maybe by darkening the cookie a little bit there. It's oh, starting, okay. to, starting to disappear into the back. Your highlight running down here, that highlight looks great. The highlight over here, the glass here looks very good. What is that highlight there? That's a reflection from my scrim on the right that okay. was highlighting the bottle. That's this one. Yeah. This highlight here. Okay. Is that okay? That spot um, there? I'm not crazy about it. I don't think it ruins your picture. I, I don't think most people would even notice it. Uh, the only reason I notice is it is it happens here right where there's a bunch of dark stuff. So the okay. dark stuff makes it look brighter. If it happened down here, not sure I'd even I'd even notice it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um I'm not even sure I'd worry about it at this point. Your your um, highlight here on the milk bottle could move back to that line. Oh yeah, right there you could move it back. That might change this. It might not. Um, or you could flag this off right out of picture here. You put a flag. Oh okay. So that your your softbox is still lighting up this guy, but it, this one's not seeing it. The third way to do it is to shoot it with a flag, whether it's, it wrecks your milk bottle or not. Uh, and then you have that shot here uh, and just take it in Photoshop and, you know, grab one and move it over and, and fix it. Uh, like I say, though, I don't know if it really, I don't think it kills your shot. It does pull my eye. There's no way I can look at the picture without seeing it. So right. something to think about. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. What and what lens? Um, golly, it's the fifty to one forty Fuji and the Fuji XT three or fifty five. I forget what it is. It's kind of equivalent to the seventy to two hundred on Canon. Okay. But okay, so what's the equivalent to uh, full frame? Um. About a. 50 or a 60? I don't remember what focal life I shot this at, actually. I'll have to go back and look, but I can... Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't remember if I zoomed out on this one. It looks like you, you're out at least 50 or 60 equivalent. The reason is you're shooting straight across at the bottom of the bottle, right? And we're yeah. shooting pretty much straight across at the top of the bottle. We're pretty much about here. So you're slightly telephoto, 60, maybe even 80 millimeter yeah, equivalent. Yeah, I, I think it's some... Somewhere around 75 or 80, but I have to go look. I have like 200 shots. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Answer to your question, do they have to be in focus? No. Okay. No. They have to be in focus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, very good. Thanks. Very good. Anyone else? Awesome sauce. Uh, as I said earlier, the assignment, next week's assignment, will go up in probably 20 minutes. Uh, and it's shadows. We're going to let shadows rule the day. So we're always working with highlights, and we're always talking about highlights, and we're always talking about the light. Let's talk about shadows for a while. So that's going to be the assignment for next week. Uh, there's a great little video and some samples. And... Um, Put your soft boxes away, get out those hard speed lights, get up early in the morning, use the sun. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
I'll see you next week. Oh, by the way, would any of you guys be interested in a weekly show where I critique individual images? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure, no, that'd be great. Okay, I, uh, I am. Generic images or stuff that uh, we would submit? You would submit your images, your images. Not, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and, 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 and critique somebody who didn't ask me that I, that's to me is the height of like, I don't ever want to do that. If you don't ask me for a critique, I'm never going to say anything about your picture, you know, other than I like it, you know, because when you're critiquing a photograph, if someone asks you to tell, let's say, um, Let's just grab a picture. I'm just going to grab a picture here. I'm going to grab Greg because Greg knows me and I know Greg and Greg knows I'm not talking about Greg. If I had this picture and Greg called me and say, what do you think of it? I don't even know how to answer that. For what? For what? What were you trying to do, Greg? Because if you tell me what you were trying to do, I might be able to answer the question of did you do it or not? But it would be, you know, the, the other type people that come in, and so, so many people do, they go, well, that's a nice shot, Greg, but I would have stood this one up over here and moved this one over here and taken that one and then moved the light a little higher. Well, that's not Greg's shot. That's your shot. You're telling Greg what you would do with the, um, the little coffee things. You're not telling Greg what he did with them. And when you, when you are critiquing, you have to know. That's why I give these assignments and I give some structure to them so that we're all on the same page. I know what you wanted to do with that picture because you're doing my assignment. Then I can give you a critique. Hardest thing in the world is to, you know, someone sends you a picture of a, of a child or something and what do you think of the picture? I, no clue. No clue what, because, you know, well, it's sharp. I'm so beyond, I don't care if pictures are sharp unless they have to be. I don't care if pictures are composed correctly unless they have to be, because I don't know what correctly means. Correctly means one thing to one person, one thing to another person. We just looked at a potato that sold for a million dollars. I'll laugh about it, joke about it, but you know, who am I to say the guy shouldn't have paid a million dollars? If he had a million dollars, he wanted the potato shot, good for him. So, when I critique, I've got to know what were you trying to do with the image. Um, that helps. That helps me. And then you get something of value out of it because I don't try to rebuild your image. I'll never say, oh, you should have put this up here and you should have moved this over here because that's me making my image. And that's not interesting. All right, folks. Thank you so much. We are going to uh, start that uh, critiquing thing. Uh, about midweek here, so I will let you know how to get the pictures to me. I'll post it here on the, I'll post it here on the site here. It'll be up towards the top uh, to remind you, uh, but it'll be open to everybody. and It'll be open to the first uh, like 20 pictures that come in uh, on the email, and um, uh, I'll give you the, the rest of the rules and stuff like that. All right, folks, take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Don. Bye -bye. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Yeah.